Assalamu alaikum brother Josh, how are you? Wa alaikum salam, very well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Can you please tell us how did you discover Islam? How did you, were you a Muslim before? Well, we were all born Muslim, but I discovered Islam on my own path. I, um, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. And I came into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous on June 6th, June 21st, 2006. Um, and so before that, um, I had lived uh, a very selfish, scary life. Um, there wasn't a lot of faith in the house I grew up in, um, a lot of turmoil. I didn't learn a lot of coping skills. And. Uh, kind of wound up in a very bad place. So on, on June 21st of 2006, I uh, found the solution by the grace of God. And in that program, I was helped to uh, find a God of my understanding. So I spent the next few years uh, daily working towards uh, building a better relationship with God developing a deeper understanding of God. And one of the first things I did was I had to kind of understand, you know, what traits, you know, what what was God and after some time I came up with that God was all powerful. He would have to be to create the universe and everything in it. That he was all loving. Because there was no reason why he would create something to then hate it, and that he was all patient. Because in my personal experience, I found that despite all of my missteps and all of my problems and all of the, you know, things that I might have, sinful things that I might have said or done, he was always there waiting for the moment when I was ready to come back to him. And so, all powerful, all loving, and all patient. And I did a lot of work over the years working with other people. Um, I worked with other alcoholics for um, a good portion of the time. I uh, met in groups um, to help other people find a better understanding of God, um, help people learn how to pray and meditate, and always working on myself every day, working on myself and my relationship with God. So how did Islam help you fight the addiction? Or? Well, um, by the time I, so when I was about a year and a half sober, uh, on the end of 2007, early 2008, I uh, met the woman who would be my wife today. And uh, she was raised Muslim. Her, um, her mother was a convert about 30, 35 years ago. Her father was born Muslim because his father had been a convert about 45 years ago. And so she had uh, grown up in a Muslim household with two Muslim parents, even though she was American, born in New York. Both of her parents, well, one of her parents, her mother's American, her father is British. Um, and so I first began learning about Islam when I met her. In 2009, we moved down here, and it was the first time she had been away from her Muslim community. And so we had. Uh, well, I had. She was nervous. She didn't want to just go visit a strange mosque. She'd had some bad experiences in some other places, just kind of going in um, to a new mosque or a new masjid where she didn't know people. And they would make judgments about her sometimes, you know, she was this, this white girl or this American girl coming in and by herself. And it was, it was an uncomfortable experience for her. So I had tried to find some way for her to develop a group here. And we had met Imam Sykes. And I got to know Imam Sykes very well. And I knew what I knew about Islam from my wife and meeting her family. And uh, as I began to study with Imam Sykes, what I really liked was that every time I learned something about Islam from Imam Sykes, it never conflicted with anything I had learned about God in the previous three or four years of my studies. You know, my personal relationship that I had developed with God. 
And I would have that problem sometimes when I would meet with people and we would read the Bible or we would read other books. And, and every now and again, you know, as I'd read through it, I'd be like, oh, this is really good. You know, this is very spiritual. And then I'd find something and it'd be like, this just doesn't really make, like, this doesn't sound like God. This, this, this doesn't sound like the God that has intervened in my life, you know, the God that has provided me with so many blessings and so much love. Um, doesn't make sense. And when I began to learn about Islam, I, it was wonderful because I never came across anything that didn't make sense like that. So what was your faith prior to Islam? Hmm? What was your faith before Islam? What were you? I didn't belong to any sort of church or religion. Um, I prayed daily and worshipped. Um, I would meet and pray with um, other brothers, um, not Muslim brothers, but brothers from the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I would pray each day, pray every morning when I wake up. I would try to pray multiple times throughout the day, I'd try to stop my day. It was one of the first things I was really attracted to by Islam was the ability to kind of discipline myself more to do that more regularly. Um, I, I immediately saw the blessing of being given these times where I could stop my day before it got too out of control and bring myself back to a place of peace with God. And I, I very much, very much appreciated that uh, right away. What, what sort of advice would you give for someone who is addicted or someone who has such a, a alcohol problem or drug problem or anything of that nature? What, what would be your advice to them how, how they can come out, of the, come out of that situation? Well, one of the things that I've learned about my personal addiction was that it was never about the drugs or the alcohol. Uh, the drugs and the alcohol weren't my problem. They were always my solution. They weren't a very good solution, but for a number of years, they were, got me by. And so, you know, my problems were much deeper than that. Most of my problems came from the home, came from uh, broken and damaged relationships with my parents, uh, bad experiences early on in childhood that built up a lot of fear and shame inside of me. You know, one of the things I found today, you know, I mentioned my, my original conception of God that I developed when I got sober was that he was all powerful, all loving, and all patient. And I love that today because, you know, as I learned more about God here in Islam, those are three of the names, of the 99 names of Allah, that he is the all loving, the all patient, the all powerful. There are many things that God is, you know, we can look to those, I love reading through those names, and there are so many traits and things that we can find, and what I find in my life today is that anytime I feel any of those things, that's God working in my life. I can't feel love without it being given to me from God. If God is all loving, then there is no love, love can't come from anywhere else. All love comes from God. So when I feel something like that, it means I am close to God. There are no names for God that, that He is the all-shaming. Um, and when I feel shame, that means that I'm very far away from God. And, it's, uh, and I had lots of shame, lots of fear and guilt about the way I lived, you know. And as I would drink and do drugs, I would do more things that made me feel more fear, guilt, and shame. And it just kept steamrolling until it got to a point where you know, I believe God had to intervene, you know, that, that God had to basically give me some clarity and break through the fog in my mind to, to just kind of give me a single message to... Were you praying uh, for help while you were in... I was not. Um, I was not. I mean, I had reached a place of complete hopelessness and despair. And, and in that moment, a thought came to me, which I now um, associate with divine inspiration. Um, you know, through meditation, when you can hear God and learn directly from God. Um, it's very similar to that. And the thought just came to me that night that tomorrow I needed to find an AA meeting. I didn't know anything about AA. I didn't know anyone who was in AA, but it led me to a place where I could begin learning about God, developing a relationship with God that would ultimately bring me here into Islam, that would ultimately provide all of the, the peace and love I have in my life today. Dealing with my addiction, you know, I couldn't just stop drinking because it wasn't about the drinking. I couldn't just stop using drugs because it wasn't about the drugs. Because when I stopped using them, 
all I was left with was that fear and guilt and shame. And it wasn't until I was able to develop a relationship with God who could take that away from, you know, who our God is, Allah is all forgiving, you know, who can forgive those things and, and bring me to a place of peace. And um, that I was able to move forward. And I had to do a lot of, I did a lot of work, a lot of disclosure. I had to, you know, talk about those things and let them out in the open so they were less scary. Um, I had to make amends sometimes for things that I had did that I felt guilty about. I had to go back and I had to make them right. I had to fix some broken relationships. Um, and all of that, you know, was truly, all of that right action, all of that, you know, those acts of, of love and compassion were, were all things that I was able to do with God's help. So how did uh, the Muslim community embrace you after you you become Muslim. Was it a difficult transition, or how did you uh, My transition come to know been, like the culture, the religion is different from what you were brought up? Or? My transition has been very smooth. Um, one of the reasons is, is because I've been blessed to be comfortable with my relationship with God and and who I am in His world today. You know, I, I made a lot of changes in my life before coming to Islam. There were very few I had to make after embracing Islam. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can think of not eating pork. Um, ultimately, I, you know, I think within my first year of being Muslim, I, I began keeping halal, uh, which I find to be a blessing of its own as well. Um, but there were very few changes that really affected my life because I had already stopped. I had stopped living in a way that was damaging, that was selfish or um, sinful. Those, those actions had slowly been changing and, and my life had slowly been changing for a number of years before I came in here. Uh, I noticed with many other converts though that they come to Islam looking for that change, looking to develop that relationship with God, looking for something that can bring them peace or, or uh, you know, relieve them of the fear and the guilt and the shame. So my question, why Islam? Why not another religion for that matter? Why, why, why choose Islam? What, what attracts this convert to Islam? What is it in Islam that attracts them? Or? Well, what, it, what attracted me to Islam was that the more I learned about it, um, the more it met with you know, my conception of God that I had already developed. Um, and as I, as I would meet with Imam Sykes, Imam Sykes and I began, you know, we, we would meet daily for a period of time and we were... Um, we would work out together in the morning. Um, I was helping him with some things that he was going through. He was helping me uh, learn more about Islam. And, and it was wonderful because we had these two people, him and I, who had come from two completely separate backgrounds and who had learned about God from two completely different sources. Um, we, had, we shared no common sources, but everything that we knew about God was the same. Um, and it was wonderfully confirming you know, to meet another person who had peace in his life the way I did, and who had found it from a completely different source. But I knew that that source was true because it gave him the same results that mine did. So um, I was able to very easily accept Islam as just being a place for me to learn more about God and, and develop a closer relationship with Him based on how I saw I've worked in the lives of some of the first Muslims like Imam Sykes that I didn't know very well. Zakullah Khair, and your name again? Josh? Brother Josh. Zakullah Khair. Can you, can you tell us about the program that, uh, that the MEGO has here and uh, what, what this program is all about? And, uh... We've started a program on Wednesday nights. It's um, typically from 6.30 to 7.30. And what we do is... What's the location of that? What? The location is in the Mago Cafeteria here at um, ICO. And so it's, if you come to JAMA, it's the blue building just south of it. Same parking area. And what we do is Wednesday night, 6.30. Um, we have a group where it's an open house. And all are invited. And we try to be able to um, help answer questions for non-Muslims. So this is a place where, you know, if you are a new Muslim, you can come. Um, it, it's another opportunity to try to learn more, ask questions. Um, we don't want people to be afraid of asking the questions. 
And so Imam Sykes has a wonderful class on Sunday mornings. Um, Imam Sykes' class is very much a one-way class. Imam Sykes spends great deals of time each week preparing and refining these slides that are filled with so much just a, an amazing depth of information and knowledge on um, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, on his life, on the hadiths, on the Quran, on, on all, all, all sorts of topics uh, relating to Islam. And so, so much of that time is in that class is spent um, where he just provides this information. What we try to do here is we try to have more of a two-way class. And so we don't prepare lessons, we don't have slides, we're not um, you know, we don't have a topic that we're going to kind of lecture or uh, put on. But what we do is we have a, a small daily reader, and so we start each with a, a verse or two from Quran and a verse or two from Hadith. And uh, myself and Brother Arthur, who is another American convert, share our experiences with that. We share our understanding of it, how we would apply that bit of Islam in our lives. And then we, having set the tone, we go around the room and Newcomers are welcome to introduce themselves. If they come from a background of faith, um, they're allowed to share any of their own understandings. If it seems similar to something they know from the Bible or the Torah, um, they're welcome to share um, how they can relate, try to find the commonalities in the faiths. Um, and then we welcome them, we encourage them to ask any and all questions they have. Uh, we try to end at 7.30, so that way some of the Muslims who are here can go back and pray Isha. Anyone who needs to leave can. But Brother Arthur and myself always make ourselves available afterwards to answer any more questions or spend any more time talking to the newcomers who, who do come. So it's a very open class. Um, much of it is a discussion. It goes back and forth. Um, but we try to be here to break away any misconceptions, answer any questions people have, and help show them the spirit of Islam.